Hello everyone, and here we are again, as we continue with our reading of Monster Mysteries. Today's chapter, Yeti, the Man-Thing. About 150 years ago, British soldiers, civil servants, and big game hunters began to travel in the Himalayas. They heard some very strange stories indeed. The local people, including Sherpas, told the British that fierce, hairy men lived in the mountains. Though several British visitors recorded the tales, they did not believe them. Then, in 1889, Major Radel saw strange tracks in the snow of the Himalayas. He asked some Sherpas what animal had made the tracks. The Sherpas assured him that a yeti, or man-thing, was responsible. Over the following years, many travelers came across strange footprints. News of these footprints spread, and soon the yeti became the subject of scientific debate. Some scientists thought that the yeti could exist while others dismissed it as a figment of the imagination. In 1951, startling new evidence emerged. Two mountaineers, Eric Shipton and Michael Ward, were climbing on the Menlung Glacier at a height of 6,000 meters. Shipton and Ward were starting to see a line of footprints. The tracks were not human, but they were fresh. Unlike others who had seen supposed Yeti tracks, Shipton had a camera. He chose the clearest footprint and took a photograph of it. The picture showed a footprint that was unlike that of any known animal. Nobody has been able to explain what type of animal made the print, and it remains the most important piece of evidence for the existence of the Yeti. It is from mountaineers that the most important modern evidence for the existence of the Yeti has come. In 1975, Janas Tamazukzuk, a Pole, came face to face with what he claimed to be a Yeti. He described the beast as being similar to an ape, over two meters tall. In 1979, an expedition mounted by the British Royal Air Force brought back more pictures of footprints. Some mountaineers, such as Chris Bonington of England, have even started to place yeti hunting among the aims of their expeditions. Because reports by mountaineers and restaurant visitors are so scanty, researchers interested in the yeti have turned to the Sherpas for information. The Sherpas seem to regard the Yeti as a perfectly normal animal, in the same way as they think of bears or monkeys. However, Sherpas often seem to be frightened when they think that a Yeti is nearby. According to the stories told by the Sherpas, there are two types of Yetis. First, there is the Zuti. This is a large animal, standing nearly three meters tall, which is aggressive and dangerous. It seems to have been a zoo tea that attacked the yaks, being herded by Lakpa Shepani. A smaller type of yeti is Lamete. This harmless creature usually runs off when it meets a human. Both types of yetis are said to live in the dense forest just below the snow line. Though they often roam the high peaks, it is among the peaks that the high-pitched whistling call of the Yeti is most often heard. Yetis are described as being covered with hair, which is longer on their heads than on their bodies. Though their faces are generally bare, the Yetis are said to move most often on all fours, they would bound along using their hind feet and the knuckles of their front limbs. From this description, it seems that the Yeti is a type of large ape. It is possible that it resembles 
a gorilla or an orangutan. From fossil evidence, it is known that apes lived in this mountain area only a few thousand years ago. Perhaps the Yeti is an isolated descendant from earlier times. The theory is not too far-fetched. There were plenty of dense forested areas in the Himalayas where a group of large apes could have found enough food to survive. The Himalayas are not the only place in Asia where strange stories of hairy people are told. Throughout northern China, Mongolia, and eastern Russia, the local people report encounters with creatures called Almas. Unlike the Yetis, the Almas are not looked upon as animals by local residents. They believe that the Almas are real, but very primitive and inferior people. It is interesting that the description given by Asians of Almas and their culture is very similar to the picture of Neanderthal people built up from archaeological finds. The Neanderthal people were a separate subspecies of humans who died out about 40,000 years ago. Some scientists think that isolated tribes of Neanderthals may still survive in the remote areas of Asia. However, there is little evidence other than the stories of local people to support this idea. Well now, isn't that very interesting? Join me on Thursday, maybe, as we return to the Americas and encounter another sort of ape-man. See you then!